so we'll start with the session uh, first i'll introduce you to shishir uh, he has around 10 years of work experience across uh, you know uh, in the senior roles and, and in the junior roles both and he has been uh, he has been an interviewee and he has been the interviewer as well right so he knows both the both the sides of the table uh, so he has worked with samsung uh, right paytm uh, walmart uh, and he's currently working with microsoft right uh, so let's let's hear from him what uh, what uh, what are his learnings from his experience so the agenda of the session is uh, how we are going to structure the session is so we'll probably uh, you know there were seven pointers in the agenda uh, in the agenda of the session that we rolled out right so one was on the resume uh, second was uh, you know what uh, what is the interview process then uh, the third is how to prepare for each of the rounds then problem solving on data structure uh, system design hr and pi rounds and probably the uh, the q and a session what we are going to change about this uh, agenda is one uh, after after speaking to you guys i think resume is something that you guys were not really interested in will not give that part a very high importance right so we'll spend more time on the other uh, sections uh, so shishir uh, should we start yeah sure <coughs> okay all right all to you according to the questions uh, which were displayed earlier so uh, what i feel is out of everything in the interview process a resume is least important so i would say that uh, uh, be um, to the point and and don't over explain anything as a guideline take uh, linkedin and uh, take just download link your linkedin profile as a resume and that would be good enough stress more on technologies what you have worked on um, because that is what the interviewer will be looking for in order to ask questions um so a lot of companies are coming to our i uh, i side where i'm doing m tech so my, so a lot of companies are looking at the, the short listing the resume and then i'm not getting short listed for inter oh, okay. so I think for shortlisting purposes, uh, so some key point should be that uh, the technologies which they are uh, looking for should be nicely mentioned in your technologies. So the thing is, they would be doing a text search search across all resumes, and if that thing what they are looking for that particular technology is not found, that will be that would be something they would be looking for. So if, if for example, can I know your profile? Like, what exactly do you work on? Um. So uh, actually, I'm from math background. So I did like B math and maths, and then I moved to like MTech computer science. Okay, so so you have to mention the the exact technologies on which you want to work further, like if it is related to iOS or or if it is some Objective C or whatever language you have worked on, that should be clearly mentioned because that is across what they would uh, search. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Shishir, I want to add something here uh, on the resume part. yeah so yeah uh, what what we have seen is uh, the companies they do have something called application tracking system all right so the application tracking system it's kind of a bot uh, you know which uh, which looks for a specific template of the resume specific keywords and based on that it shortlists the resume and send it to recruiter so assume it this way that there is a bot you know which is managing the processes which is managing the entire recruitment process for a recruiter right so it's just a bot and your resume should be should be optimized for that bot so that it reaches the recruiter so koshik in your case it might be the case you know that your resume is getting uh, you know lost at the ats the application tracking system it's a software right okay. so i'll send you the post which you can follow to prepare your resume right okay. so it can clear the ats okay thanks all right okay Okay, let's move on to the next question. Which uh, so the next pointer is uh, levels of interviews at Microsoft. So the thing is, uh, the recent process which I had been is like first would be a go no go sort of interview in which they would be looking for um, whether the, they would ask you some some basic questions and they would see whether you would be good enough for next rounds of interviews or not. So that would be very initial phases, and it most prob probably no but no one is uh, is uh, excluded from that round. unless and until you really give some uh, wrong answers to basic technical questions so that it will be directly related to your technology and there will be some questions like uh, basic questions on that technology so after this you will generally uh, go through uh, either a dsl go round or a system design one or a technology related round 
and they can be mixed mixed also there will be four or five interviews on this the questions would be directly related to technology only um in the technology rounds so let's say you are in in a ui or if you are in a in a back end or you are in ai whichever space you are so direct directly they would ask you questions and you would have to do that on on whiteboard uh, or on paper uh, they won't ask you to do it on machine that is what i have seen so they would ask you mostly questions on paper so you would be asked to write your complete solution on paper um there will be questions asked uh, it whatever they would understand your approach and all uh, the different ways in which you will uh, solve that question uh, so what is important is not uh, not yet just the solution but uh, your approach and uh, during the course of your answering they would ask you some questions uh, those questions would be to judge your in depth knowledge on the subject they are not directly related to the problem though um so even if you land up not solving that question they would just try to know the depth of your uh, thought process so this is what they would look in the technology round uh, going to data structure and algorithm round um so first of all through a brute force approach at least give them some answer um and then you try try to uh, optimize it further based on what questions interviewer asks so what uh, what i would say is like uh, go through all the online sites uh, which teach these kind of questions on data structure and algorithms lead code is one which i have seen is very very nicely followed everywhere so most questions that are picked from there there might be some minor changes because i have seen companies where where uh, questions are generally there the rule that it has to be a new question and not from any online source but again the concepts remain same you have to go through basic concepts like for example very commonly used concept is hashing for example so go through the 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 details of that so i will take an example here um for example um you are writing an algorithm in which there are there you are using two loops okay and they would ask you to do do it with one loop um to do that they would expect some basic things like hashing um hashings of various sorts which you can use then they would they would ask for some of those algorithms which you might have learned in your algorithm let's say quick sort for example the way quick sort is implemented uh, you might be knowing it but then the question would be something which would bring that logic um like finding a pivot element in a quick search so using this kind of uh, approaches how you apply that to the current problem it won't be directly related to quick 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 sort but it will be uh, using those principles so i would say when when a problem is put up try to bring all those concepts on table okay at least it shows the depth of uh, knowledge like if it is a tree based question um if it is about tree traverses try to apply all that kind of traverses and all and, and try to reach at some some solution through that even if you don't find any solution try just try to bring that on table somehow that would improve your condition there um but yes uh, these things can be improved a lot by by studying uh, things online which is lead code or any such interview interview place where you can practice your questions up front recursion is something i'm definitely sure that some of the questions will will involve that specifically when they when they try to bring questions related to games and all they would they would like to uh, do something through recursion in that case so um the approach to solve these questions is more and more you read about it on uh, sites like lead code and try to solve it on your own don't try to solve it till the end with your programming language try to solve it on paper because that way you would be faster to do, faster doing that so uh, by don't don't spend more than 5 10 minutes in order to think of any solution initially you would you would have to read the solutions and uh, slowly you you would get that uh, that speed of doing it faster um, don't push initially um, try to read more and that would increase your speed uh, with time uh, try to solve solve it uh, uh, online on different text uh, try to solve it without programming language and see whether you reach a solution um if if a solu- if a question has 5 uh, 10 solutions i would say read and try all those solutions okay mm, in an interview also uh, they would first expect a brute force approach then you trying trying to optimize it might lead to three four more solutions uh, more the better i would say and uh, saying the best possible solution of of a, of a problem 
right on the first step is not what the interviewer is looking for it might uh, be bad also because that would show that you have you have crammed a lot of these questions mm -hmm. um, so 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 there is a, a a thought process which you have to understand in order to uh, uh, answer a question not the actual solution which is of course asked but you have to give it at the end not at the start so you so uh, interviewer wants to know your th thought process more than the solution here any questions no uh, so samira is asking you were you were telling something about backend developer being asked questions on graphs so so i would say that uh, graphs and specifically the uh, the tree based questions are very common um you can go to lead code choose the difficulty level easy hard hard they would definitely ask one or two hard questions also um and you might not be able to answer those but better to bring all the concepts of graphs and trees which you have learned over time and uh, see where it goes but uh, yeah the thing is uh, practice is the is the major thing here which you have to do any website to follow to first know the basics to attack these interview type questions uh, one thing i would say is first go through uh, youtube videos that would give you a good uh, launch pad from where you can start youtube videos and then for uh, actual questions and all i would suggest lead code the the site name is lead code l e e t c o d e lead code and uh, when you go go for answering others question um, solving them i mean this will give you a good confidence um, you you can also do that on stack overflow uh, so although these sites are very common but yes these are the places which you should go for i mean the the thing remains same that you have to practice through these websites um so shishir uh, there is a phone screening round in all the big mncs that we that we are talking about and then yeah. there will be four to five rounds is it uh which a person has so to go through. phone screening uh, would depend on the on the the level of interview so if the interview is going for a senior level it might not be as there might not be a phone screening it would also be decided based on your location actually so if you stay in bangalore and the company is in bangalore so most probably there won't be a phone screening they would directly call you then obviously when you are you are given a chance to either choose from phone screening or to directly land on office i would say directly land because that gives more uh, confidence to interviewer rather than asking something on phone phone screens screenings are generally uh, they they don't give enough confidence to interviewer to whether to go ahead or not um, you you land up losing at times because of of uh, not being physically present and you have only because there's a trust there are trust issues in in phone screens which i've seen when people take a lot of time to answer it it would seriously mean for for them to be just copying from somewhere or reading from somewhere if you do it do it uh, on phone i would say don't take too much time in answering um agreed that you need to think about a lot but then it also brings a bias here that that um interviewer would be developing over time that that you are reading from somewhere so here your confidence and your speaking skills would be most important rather than anything else so better is to speak more in those rounds because that is the only way they would know you and try not to spend too much time on thought process so uh, there is a uh, algorithms round the ds round then there is a yes. system design round right uh, yes. what are, what other rounds did you mention uh, you mentioned couple of uh, one your uh, so the data structure and algorithm round plus your technology specific round for example let's say you are into javascript so then they would ask you questions in javascript but then they will be combined with data structure and algorithm one thing is that but if that happens there will be another round of similar type only where again they would be judging you on same skills so two rounds most probably will be there in every company for the same scale actually for data structure itself there will be two rounds at least um, and, the, and and better companies uh, would try to merge it with your uh, technology specific whichever whichever language you go operate on for uh, back end of course uh, so whatever uh, background you have just uh, stay on your language only uh, try to answer in that language only but since it will be on paper and not on actual machine uh, you are allowed to make any small mistakes so it would it will be overlooked mostly the solution would be required here uh, so this this will be uh, related to algorithm and data structure for 
design rounds i would say that uh, these rounds are most of are mostly conversation based but uh, when you are, are uh, answering something try to uh, link it to concepts as well as write something on on paper like if it is related to if it, it might not be direct question of algorithm but you should try to write something the more you write in front of uh, uh, the interviewer the more concrete the scenario becomes and uh, interviewer is also supposed to ask for the questions based on that so these questions are are, are more of um, i would say if you if you read medium posts a lot medium.com then there would be a lot of questions where there would be a lot of posts where the thought process is discussed or possible solutions of problems are discussed okay there there are some some medium posts if you follow um, people who are who are, who are your uh, role model be it in javascript or the if it's a react or any such uh, framework there are most important people in industry which you can follow through medium and they write about uh, uh, the, the various things the various problems they come across in their job jobs and how they tackle them the thought thought process which they write there what all solutions they considered and what they went with after that how they solved the problem so those things you can read about in medium because that is what interviewer will will be looking for because ultimately either you have experience of that problem which which is not always the case or rarely the case actually um most of the time it, it will be the the more you read about and talk to people on technology grounds that would help you answer those questions like for example so you are scrolling and items are coming one after the other so so the question will be that abstract it will ask you how to implement that in most uh, optimized way so that which which data structures you would use to to make it very fast you know and easily accessible and at the same time use less amount of data so you have to think about uh, here uh, uh, the the grounds would be scaling like um it should be uh, scaled to as many items as possible it will be asked for which all devices you want to focus on um, how would you start your uh right from database design to uh, service design here as well as uh, then landing it on the client uh, at the various levels at which caching will be done on this um so such questions will be asked how will you design it with what all databases what uh, if you are using any real time database or if you are using some key value way of uh, of caching um, or if you want to do it on edge which is uh, at aws level or azure level so the more things you 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 take out here um, at various levels they would ask um, so so give them an, a a general structure first then interviewer will take you into uh, into into definite uh, detailing of that based on whatever he asks them um, and then you can detail it out but the main thing is that you have to more and more read this rather than do it because if you try to do it everything on your job it not it, it won't be possible uh, one or two things you might by your luck uh, crack that but then again it it is a too vast thing to do and uh, for whichever role you might be interviewing for they would still expect everything end to end here in design it won't be directly related to your technology so this is one of the rounds which would happen after so these three rounds two data structures and one uh data structure and and technology is based at least two rounds and then after that it is a system design round uh followed by there will be a managerial round which is very common it's not the 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 final round though managerial rounds will be more based on how you your attitude actually uh, not the uh, hr round it won't be an hr round by attitude they would mean like how you you fixed the uh, problems of other people in your job how you mentored them them this can happen in higher roles though um they would expect specific scenarios where you got caught up where you made a mistake and then they would go into depth technically also how you solved it uh, and what happened and whom to whom did you reach out what if you were not able to solve it how did you tackle all those situations so uh, those kind of scenarios where they would look for your behavior but again technology wise only nothing uh, related to hr in most of the cases there won't be any hr round um, 
this this will be the the, the this this managerial role would be taken by 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 very seasoned um, too many too much experienced high level people which are generally considered as gems like in in microsoft they are called as gems they are very few and they are very distinguished kind kind of people and they can understand you very well um, so after this basically when you are clearing all these um, <coughs> there will be a kind of debrief which will be happening inside company after that uh, <clears throat> candidate won't be involved here all the interviews during this time of your interview would be taking down uh, all the transcript so they will be uh, typing all the things which you would speak and then all that transcript will go into that discussion it will be called as debrief where all stakeholders will be present interviews which took you around and interviews which did not take but still they were part of you they would be part of your team there will be one final round uh, who would be asking you uh, those questions of those rounds will did not uh, answer properly so if you did not answer properly in algorithms round they might be asking you again on that it's a hint that you did not do good in those round but it act, but at the same time it it is uh, still a good point because you are still going further in the rounds that means but that is your uh, last chance to prove in those places where you did not perform good so uh, most probably if such round happens uh, hr will communicate you that these are the grounds where you were not good and then i would say that that prepare on those things only because because they are yes or no for you after, after that uh, so that would be the final round it may happen and may not happen depending on the type of candidate that would most probably happen another day not on the same day though so this will be how the complete structuring would be any questions on that yeah hello uh, shishi yes so i wanted to understand more into the system design round so can mm. just uh, you know give uh, uh, you know with an example like if you are asking any candidate let's say design instagram right so mm -hmm. being Uh, like what you expect uh, you know from the candidates so let's say you know uh, do you want candidate to design all this load balancing stuff or the, you know they have to think about the networking as mm -hmm. well well i got you so uh, so it depends on uh, what uh, technology you are being interviewed for they would definitely try to press you on that but again they would like to answer you um, everything end to end like starting from um, the requirements phase how you decide on any requirement and how you think of designing them um like for example very famous question these days comes on uber so there is this uh, um so since everybody has used it all everyone knows its feature so it's absolutely not a thought process which you have to spend much time on it's expected you would know how to, how, how it works but how it is implemented like for example a uh, a driver is around your your place um you, uh, then which all algorithms you would use to uh, find out his location and reaching the his uh, place in least possible time um what all considerations you would have be it traffic conditions be it uh, uh, you might 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 be supposed to know all the things which you can get as data points in your system do you have any endpoints which serve you coordinates of user and if even if you have those endpoints um, it would be expected of how less and how how best you use it like the, the the major components which you would have in your design would be which kind of database which kind of caching system mm -hmm. um, and of course the algorithm like if you are calling that service of reading coordinates um how, after how much time you would keep calling that um, and then there can be two or three riders together how would you optimize this 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 complete thing so that it becomes best for the uh, for the now here a questions can be asked like you have to design a system in which it would be best for the a uh, driver it would it should be best for the driver to one more and more or it can be it can be best for the broker which is over itself to earn more and more it you have to design a system that that might be best for the rider as well so they, it depends on on what perspective he wants to take you to uh, you have to think on that uh, from that level only and uh, think about like um, if it is about uh, saving cost like if you want to save on fuel 
best possible route. You might have learned a lot of algorithms at this stage on that. Um, try to bring those. And uh, um, also, uh, if you have uh, written a lot of REST services, how you scale them, load balancing, as you said, uh, those things also come into picture here because you cannot, um, there are restrictions on user's device. Mm -hmm. it, it might be less, less CPU oriented. It might be um, bad in bandwidth. You might lose the connection with the uh, the, the rider. Um, there are a lot of things which you have to think on this. Um, it, it will also show show the thought process you are going through and what all problems you are able to tell beforehand. Because as a, as a, uh, as an experienced uh, developer who has designed these kind of things, might know these problems beforehand. Then uh, putting those problems and uh, giving the solution to them, and then so slowly you have to trickle down to actual implementation. Uh, level, uh, depending on on the interviewer where he wants to take you to. But in most of these interviews, I would expect the candidate to speak something out and as confidently as possible because it is an open-ended question. Okay, there's no specific answer to this now. Um, so, but but at the same time, you getting confused or you you getting if it is on um, on phone, you're taking too much time to answer. This shows a lack of uh, a thought process that that you your your loss of thoughts at that point. That means. You, you don't you don't you are not able to see very far into the problem that means uh, so okay. don't so do it in answering at that point okay so if i understood correctly so you are saying that okay the the system design on mainly they will have a two uh, uh, level right the high, higher level design then you will come uh, after that uh, lower level design right so in higher level yeah. design you will be deciding all these name what are the database you are going to use what will be the mechanism catching message mechanism you are going to use right so yes Huh. So, uh, so do you expect any, I you know, uh, this kind of answer as well, like, you know, if any candidate deciding, let's say, you know, if they are going to use MongoDB, yeah, why they, why, why they are choosing, you know, MongoDB, why not some other DB? Do you expect that as well uh, from the candidate? MongoDB? What I expect is that the candidate should be flexible enough to, to take names of at least three, four things what he has in mind and not specifically one, because that shows a lack of flexibility also. Okay. So if you're saying specifically my MongoDB, uh, questions might come why and why not, but the question more important over that would be, uh, why did, did you only pick one thing out of such a huge thing? They won't ask you this question. It will be a, an absolute negative thing right away because you are stressing on one, pos one thing only and not coming out with more than that. So don't yeah. stress on, be particular about one thing. Like, like if I want to use a particular particular framework, don't be very much specific about that you how you want to use this framework at any cost. Don't be that way. Okay. Uh, coming out pros and cons is, is, is good. You can do that, but don't pick one thing out of it. Okay. So moreover, is like in higher level design, you have to do a uh, kind of interactions with the interviewer, right? Moreover, like... Uh, yeah. And, and you have to take the hints from the interviewer where he wants to take discussion in. Okay. Okay. Try to follow him in the, in those hints. Uh, so here you don't have to be the driver. Let him uh, be the driver. Because if you, you start being a driver, it, it is a huge space to go into. And you are not sure what, what the interviewer is looking for. So let him drive. Okay. Okay. So now the second uh, doubt I had, like now, uh, if you're coming to the lower level design. So obviously, you know, after uh, you know, discussing about the higher level things, now you uh, will decide like what are the APIs. Let's say if you are designing backend, so you will be name all the APIs, right? All the services you need. What are the APIs name you have to you know uh, write that thing as well, right? But do you expect uh, you know and the candidate to write a code as well? Uh, let's say you know okay now you have designed the API for to get the profile picture. Now you, you know write a piece of code and show me something like that. I don't expect the actual code. Uh, just a, a pseudo code would be fine. Like you don't have to take name of specific APIs, but yeah, I expect candidate to know the basics of protocols. If they are using an HTTP protocol, HTTPS, the security stuff, mm -hmm. everything I was expecting from candidate here. And if a REST service, then which all kind of REST services, whether he wants to take it to which direction that is all on interviewer, but I expect interviewer to know these things, things over uh, specifics of which API to use. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. yeah, that's the answer my uh, questions. Yeah, thanks. So that those people who want to learn um, about uh, are prepared about system design, I would uh, I would suggest them to um, uh, read about some basic subjects like networking, for example.
So this is something which, which I see lacking in people is that they are not aware of uh, basics of technology on which their frameworks are laid on. Like they don't know about threads, they don't know about processes. Think about the operating system concepts here, yeah. um, networking concepts here. Go into that kind of places rather than going into specifics of, okay, I will use a for loop. No, that is not required here. Okay, yeah, so this is one last thing. Uh, so uh, for the system design, can you uh, can you uh, refer any link like uh, which site is the, the, the best one, you know, uh, where we can go and we can see all the system design questions? Do you have anything like that, any links? Like I said, uh, for these rounds, I would prefer you reading posts of medium.com. So a lot of big companies, people are writing on mm-hmm. that. They also have their own comp- company the domain of medium.com if you reach out to let's say walmart walmart will be having a domain in medium.com so all people from walmart would be posting their posts there like this uh, you would understand a company from outside without being part of that company you would be sharing their experiences rather than yourself doing all that you would share from them which is expected and how about this for by the way, but just because Geeks for Geeks is very famous, I'm most of the candidates, I'm pretty much sure they must be using, they must be uh, using Geeks for Geeks. Algorithm and data structures, Geeks for Geeks is good. Um, lead code is also what I feel these days is very good. Okay. Okay. Both of them you can use, yeah. How can we understand whether this part- a particular round is a design round or programming round? Because recently I had an experience where the interviewer asked me to design a, what is a search engine Mm-hmm. And uh, ask me to write a program, and also ask me to design a system which is scalable, which should work across the world. So, this what what kind of response he is expecting from the candidate when he is asking to write a program, and then also design it. So this is a very confusing question actually. So mm-hmm. means it's like it's a simple question where you are having a company database uh, about the candidates means all the employees. And then you are having uh, the their payrolls means the means which bracket. And then he says, "I will just uh, write a query on for a particular name, uh, and then within this salary bracket and within this age bracket, I should get all the result, results." And then he also added the ethnicity and then city-based results and all those things. Provided means the company is present all over the world in in, in all of the countries and uh, representing all ethnicities, and then. It's also having presence in all the cities. So the, the question is, means whether it is a design question or a programming question or a database question. So if you are in doubt of, of what question is, you can directly ask the interviewer. There's no harm in that. Uh, so the thing is, what he is expecting, according to me, is like, uh, again, design only. It's clearly an open-ended question. Yeah, means uh, he actually asked me to write the program. Then okay. suddenly he stops me there and then... Uh, Again, moves to a design question. He might have got the answer from you. So he might might be building a problem right now. He might be t- taking you to a direction here to build that problem. Yeah. So he might be building that pro- problem right now. First, you will write code and he would take it to scalability levels and all so that he would ask you. for. So I think it's a building process. So somebody is asking like, could you please share home we can follow on Medium? So the thing is that you have to see in whichever technologies you are interested in, who are the... Uh, role models in industry wide like for example if there's someone from facebook you very good or someone from google who writes about your technologies who has written core um, libraries of your technology follow those people if they are on on medium most of them are they can be on medium they can be on youtube as well so try to follow and second thing is um, uh, here tech talks which are generally in those um, so there are this Google I.O., for example. Um, for Microsoft, there's something called Ignite. And these kind of technical conferences happen where people speak a lot. Those things become an easy uh, material for you to absorb. Um, reading things, if you don't like, then this is an easier way to uh, get into depth of things. Uh, listen to them. L- listen to their tech talks. If possible, attend those tech talks also. Or anything else. Uh, sometimes recruiters or team leaders or sometimes HR contacted me from Amazon and through call, through email or call. But after I show 
my interest, they don't contact back again. Any reason? Uh, reasons would be not related to you. It might be related to their own job openings. They might have went with some candidate or they might have closed that position. It is not related to you, according to me. So once those things open, they would again reach you. You don't have to do much here. Um, thing is, once you get any of those calls, just try to be your best. Because here you cannot do anything much. Second thing is, if you have some internal references in, in any company, that can help a lot. Like if, if you know somebody in that company, he can refer you and those people are given priority when reaching out. But that doesn't mean that their interviews would be any simp simpler. But again, the first call might be easier. Is it compulsory to share the current CTC during the first call with HR? Um, see, in outside countries, I have seen that uh, people don't share and there are laws also to not share that. But in India, they expect that and the things have not changed. Um, I would say give them a, a lump sum figure rather than exact CTC. And uh, when they ask for any, um, how much is your expected CTC, I would say, then ask, um, tell them something which um, you would ask, you would tell someone when you have not proven your worth yet. Like, for example, if it's a first call, you that they don't know anything about you much, your worth or anything. So don't try to pitch in very high CTC at this level. Say some, some normal industry standard and then move on. And at the end, maybe if you think that things have went really good and all, or you consider yourself really good, then you can pitch in for a higher one. It's not like on the first thing. It's first thing is just a um, icebreaker and nothing like uh, you have to be very specific. Most of the things would be forgotten later. Okay, so I'll be picking the next question pointer, which is uh, framework for HR and PI rounds. So HR related things, I cannot answer much, but one thing is, is for sure that uh, it will be, so mostly the technical people who are taking interviews are the sole decision makers here. So these were the total pointers. Any questions on anything till now? Uh, Shishir, so uh, in the HR round, right? Yeah. Uh, what, what exactly is the person, you know, who is taking the HR round trying to test? Like, is it a skill or... Uh, is it, you know, the fitment? Uh, what exactly is it? Because uh, I have personally felt even if a person is doing in technical rounds, sometimes it happens that, you know, because of HR round, he's not able to make it. So what I've seen at that level, when, when HR rounds happen, people try to project themselves really high. There might be these kind of issues that the, that the cultural fit, which you can call. Mm -hmm. Such things might happen, but it happens rarely whenever it happens. Okay. And that too, other people are taken into consideration, like whatever earlier interviews happened, they would be considered um, when they would say, Ki, okay, we, 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 we felt that he looks a little uh, uh, very much arrogant, let's say. If somebody, someone has this kind of uh, issue, then it will be cons uh, spoken to other uh, interviewers and then they would come out to the, come on to this uh, common uh, uh, idea that he is arrogant and, and he can they can move forward with this candidate. I mean, reject it based on this ground. But it happens rarely and, and whenever it happens, it happens with all the interviewers together and not with just one person at the end. So try to uh, be uh, in such rounds since all rounds have happened and you don't have to pitch yourself really hard that you have to show your those kind of sites which are considered negative in any company so so try to try to be sober at that point um, try to be soft and don't project yourself in a way that that would show that you just don't want to listen to anyone or you're not a good to a team player mm -hmm. so in the debriefs that you mentioned uh, there is not much involvement or uh, the HR round is not given that much of priority in the debriefs that happen after all the rounds, right? Is that uh, what you mean? So HR can be given given importance, but what I have seen in bigger companies is like HRs don't get into picture at all. Mm -hmm. so, okay. so if if they are if they are entering into picture, then of course it it is given importance. 
but if they are not entering into picture only because that that is what i have seen in bigger companies happening these these days that they do enter but they enter at the very last stage when it comes to actually giving them offer or rejecting them they just there to reject or give offer maybe mm-hmm. of course everything happens after discussion with so these uh, debrief sessions are are, are actually uh, being shared i mean the main person who is driving these is always an hr only might not be directly speaking to employee but those debriefs are generally um, uh, done with with hr only i mean he drives the conversation like like is he is this candidate fit for this role then people chip in and say he, he i think that he answered this question this way so he must be good good person to have on this role then other other candidate and the other interviewer would say no i think uh, uh, he might not be good for this role for this reason so so these kind of conversations would happen there and uh, uh, they will be presided by hr only hr plays a role of uh, actually making that conversation happen so this is how i see it all right all right so you have shared your experience in microsoft interview process is it similar in google and amazon interviews amazon interviews i feel uh, uh, what i did not like about amazon interviews was like um, they were too much into data structure and those kind of things um you can say at the hardest level of questions we you can give and they were less into the technology which you work on uh, so this is something which i feel is missing in amazon kind of places uh, google is is kind of mixed they are they they do all sort of things like uh, um a good questions plus uh, not really tough level of questions that they would find out the toughest problem in the in the uh, complete lead code or geek and they would ask you they won't do that amazon uh, i have seen is doing that so so the amazon interviews i would say are tougher in the sense that they look less into your your experience and more into your your grokking skills so someone is saying that i am from non cs background but i am doing my masters in deep learning and i just do algo and ds on python also i'm interested in software engineering job so what should i do next uh i mean you're going on the right track dsl go and that too on a particular language so that i'm i'm sure you're actually running them and all so you are good in, as a coder uh then you have a uh, then you don't have a cs background which hardly matters i never uh, look into the resume of candidate much before taking interview so uh um, cs background does not really matter um um i re- i i look into the technologies what what candidate has mentioned and whether those candidates whether those technologies are actually right so i ask questions to to validate those things going into masters in deep learning i mean it is the right now is the best possible thing which is in market is deep learning which you have went into is really good the future holds really good in that and you have already read about that that there is a resource crunch in these kind of of uh, fields so you're in the right track but uh, what you should do next i would say say then uh, what you are lacking after having these these many um, theoretical things in mind uh, so what you are lacking would would be some uh actual experience which you don't have to actually take experience or anything you just have to read about others experiences and how they applied these things into real uh, projects so i would expect you to next uh, read about all those things and actually make projects on your own uh, with these things put it in your on your github um, and places where where people go and and see your worth it can happen because if you have mentioned uh, your github links in your resume and interviewer would go into that and see your interests and what you have done maintaining a good github profile or maintaining a good online presence in any of the websites is considered good especially by those who are who, who are um, right now on the process of filtering you out or who are supposed to find out 5 out of 10 people they would search about you online also and if you have specifically given those links on on, on resume so build upon those those things also make your own projects uh, make them open source 
uh, i would be stretching it too much if you really want to want to do something good would be also to go ahead and speak in tech talks of course that is a very big thing to do but uh, that would be the ultimate goal then yeah and and then i have seen places where people are not not interviewed at all when they are able to showcase these kind of things somebody is asking that should i learn os networking and dbms yes you should all of those they are considered part of computer science uh, btech level uh, graduation so those things are are always expected from you so you should know all that shishir i have a question so you mentioned that os dbms and all the computer science things so yeah. like is it does it depend on the experience level also so for example you know uh, uh, we have a couple of folks here who are quite experienced as in people with 9 uh, or 10 years of experience so uh, i would say that they are only required for for uh, uh, someone who who is too much experienced and won't be coding a lot mm-hmm. one thing they they would be these things would be expected from them one thing where design questions become very important Mm-hmm. design round becomes very important uh, design round rounds of these sorts won't be important for people who are entry level so they don't want to s- w- stress too much into this but then they would be going into theoretical aspect of this rather than the applied aspect of this so the so these things are always important in interview but the way of asking questions from these would would differ in the way that in one place they would be asking you for an ent- entry level they would be asking theoretical stuff like explain this explain this particular thing that can be done uh, at a higher levels they would be again touching these subjects but they would be asking you the applied knowledge like how you did that in this pro- problem what all you considered so these things are always important just a, a, a way of asking would differ all right but if you are going for a coding level of a, of a job where you are expected to code 90% of the time the coding becomes most important if you're going for higher levels coding becomes lesser important more things are these applied things for entry level positions where it's not sure whether you would code or you would what you would do is not sure and there's nothing to ask you don't have any um, uh, real world experience in that case all your subjects which you have studied in btech would be important got it uh do you check uh, problem solving skills uh, you know through any puzzles and if yes then can you refer us some kind of you know sites from where we can uh, prepare for the puzzles round i have seen some companies not the bigger ones though smaller ones they ask you puzzles at times just just to ch- check your thought process okay. uh, this is something which which builds over time and you cannot do anything on the on the last day for that um but still if you want to then then you have to specifically uh, go into mathematics i would say because those things are generally solved with mathematics more than anything with algorithms to do they would you would have to find out a particular uh, formula at the end to to find out something which is very much cryptic but these things uh, would test your basic uh, aptitude skills uh, what you have in your if you have learned any any time for uh, cat interviews cat uh, exams then they have aptitude round so some questions out of those can be asked here also as a puzzle um, okay so do uh, any specific side in mind right now i mean the uh, i would expect i don't expect anyone to prepare for those things uh, you can of course but uh, uh, so aptitude kind of sites you can look for i personally don't do not recommend uh, preparing for such things and they shouldn't be asked by big companies at least very small ones just to just if they don't have anything to ask you technically because you have not worked on anything te- technical till now then they might have they might ask them okay yeah uh, so and and the, the, the second question was so yeah as you said that okay you will have some kind of manager around also right two to three manager around so one would be is like behavior around i must say uh, where you know they'll throw us some kind of scenario and they'll ask you to how to handle that kind of scenario right and that uh, so second uh, would be i think uh, you know they'll be pick up a question based on the resume based on the project what are the project we had mentioned in the resume right so i just wanted to understand how important is that like you know sometimes it happens like you have written some uh, project right but uh, you are not able to explain it properly just because obviously you have done that project long back and you uh, are not able to recall each and everything so uh, can you just uh, give a little light on that i would say if you are writing anything on resume and first of all in in higher level 
they won't go into that depth that they would ask you projects which you have done long back okay. maybe in college so but okay. if you are in in the entry level and you and they're there uh, you have read, so whatever candidate so right now you see as an interviewer you you are looking for some spaces to to make your um, questions if you don't have any uh, coding level experience or any company uh, technical experience then 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 my my questions reduce so mm-hmm. i have the next thing which comes in mind is to pick up your resume and see see what all you have worked on which would be your projects which you have worked in your college time maybe you have done on your personal capacity also okay. and then he would ask questions from there and uh, then it is a very good opportunity for you uh, because these all are in your control is it's, it's like saying that you already know questions then right because the project is something which you have worked on and and this is the question which you already know would be asked and you can take your interview to whichever direction and you can you can brag about whichever complicated stuff which you have worked on i would say that instead of mentioning anything random in your in your, in your resume you should take this in your advantage and mention something which you have really went into in detail and you would write to speak about it uh, and to say that that uh, you have written something but you don't know it might not be of of negative point for you that that much as it would be a lost opportunity for you to display your your talent okay uh, why i ask this question just because i am uh, you know i have a 10 years of work experience and definitely you know uh, if you will see whatever i was doing 10 years back right so in that uh, project it doesn't make any sense me to write anything right i'm to i, I may not be able to you know give a proper answer for that so uh, i was thinking like it is a good that you know we have to put that information as well in the resume just because if you are not putting don't in, don't write that at 10 years of experience i won't expect anyone to put that in the resume okay on okay. what you should me- mention in, in other than this as a replacement for this is, is your online presence if it is in github or any uh, such technical site you have to keep that there the link for that medium posts if you write a youtube channel if you maintain whatever yes. is your interest in okay so 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 you are suggesting that okay 10 years back i was working in the citrix so in the citrix column i don't have to mention anything related to project if you another... worked some in company that you have to definitely mention okay. you should not mention something which you did in college but mm mm-hmm, mm mm-hmm. okay in companies so you have to yeah. whatever project you do they they will they can ask you anything It generally happens at the very last rounds when when they are also run out of any questions because technically they might have asked you and everything okay so now they will be going into depth of it okay thank you welcome any other thing uh, you're asking for just does microsoft use java technologies internally uh, i haven't found that very less generally it is about c sharp dot net so shishir uh, i have one question do you have an idea of you know how salary negotiation is done i mean this might not be related to this session uh, but this is also one of the things that i uh, you know face in after the interviews are done okay so i think here the key aspect is that if you have a good networking and you know internals of people internal people or people of similar background as yours and your experience then you can get some hints of where you lie in the market okay whether you are below or higher or in market there is a, and second you also know that how your interview process went uh, it was it very good that they would do anything to get you in or it it was just normal so these two things are something which are good data points to come down to any salary negotiation um because you have to show your worth for if you're asking anything then you have to substantiate it with the, with with data points uh, those data points uh, cannot be just that he, i am very good so give me this you have to substantiate it with actual things like you have worked on this you you are famous you are needed in or you have a good uh, number of uh, offers similar to this um you have to show your worth at that point for whatever and you have to substantiate it so so um, market study is required at this point i would say got to speak anything 
Mm-hmm. All right. And Shishir, uh, may I know, like, uh, once I enter into a company like Microsoft, uh, what is the path to grow in that company? As in, like, how should I get the promotion, uh, right? Uh, what is the hierarchy? What does the hierarchy look like? So what I've seen is here and other companies, like, um, since, since, since its size is huge compared to others, uh, things are very objectively done here. Like either you have done some work or you have not done that, some work. There's less scope of subjectivity here. It's not about your direct direct manager who would be taking decisions on this. He would be just writing that what you have done and what you have not done. Yeah, there's absolutely no yes or no here because it's a fact whether you have done a work or you have not done a work. Okay, whether you have met your your particular uh, demands of job or not, and he writes that. Okay. That can be read by anyone throughout uh, Microsoft. You can either, if you want, if you're not satis- satisfied with any feedback, you can move across into internal teams and change teams. Um, so the only point here is that uh, you have to meet business demands, simple as that. And if you do that, then then it's a promotion only after that. Um, so the next position which you would get would demand more things. So you ha- would have to start giving those things right away instead of waiting for promotion so if somebody feels that he's doing work what a senior guy always does or what is uh, what a senior guy is supposed to do then you would be promoted accordingly if you're owning a complete project end to end or if you are sole point of contact for anything that means you are the only one driving it so it's uh, then it becomes easier to make a case for promotion so Shishir, uh, also like there are uh, so many platforms right now in the market, like, you know, hacker rank, uh, hacker, mm-hmm. right. Uh, so do companies like, you know, uh, Microsoft, Walmart and other big companies, do they, uh, do they like give any importance to your performance on these platforms? Uh, the, whatever work that you have done on these platforms. Uh, no, just for be... practice. Mm-hmm. No, it's clear. No, only they don't. Okay. All right. The interviewee, the, the interviewer while taking interview might look into the links which you have mentioned in your resume. Though. Okay. So if they should, whether they are of hacker rank or not, that is your wish. You can put whatever links you want. Uh, can it, the interviewer might go to those links and see. But it, what interviewer will be mostly looking for would be GitHub kind of links rather than this. Yeah, uh, thank you, you so much, uh, Shishir, uh, for your valuable time. Uh, yeah, thanks for yeah. inviting me. Yeah, it was very good session, by the way.